Hi, Babushka. I hope you're doing okay out there. You told me that you were getting an MRI on your knee and that you gotta have a shot of cortisol in it. That's good, it'll help you. And make sure you work that knee, even if it's painful. Keep the circulation flowing. Find a way to walk around. I know you frown on exercise. You say you get out of breath. Well, try some breathing and stretching exercises. It'll help you, you know, especially for your back, you know. Believe me, it'll catch up to you if you don't. But enough, enough of that. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi, and I love you, and I'm thinking about you. And, Tim, if you're out there, this goes out to you, too. The last video I made, I talked about how I met you. I failed to mention that you're a Virgo. <laughs> Virgos always get a bad rap. Why is that? I don't get it. It's a good sign. And for some reason in my life, I've been surrounded by a lot of Virgos. Right now at work, I work around about four of them. The fearless leader, who's the head of my department, he's a Virgo. He's a wonderful man. The best journeyman I've ever worked with, even though he may not think that way. He is, and he should know if he's watching this too. I'm having tea with honey, drinking lots of tea lately. But let's get into this. The story of Virgo is a very old, old, old sign. And it goes all the way back to the Babylonian zodiac. Zodiac means little animals. And not all of the signs that we see today, their stories and stuff, they've changed over the years. For real, they've really changed. You have a little bit of add-ons and a little bit of this that's morphed into that and the that and the that. But Virgo is actually a chick, a goddess named Nadoba. And she was one of the first goddesses worshipped back in the day with Babylon, you know, the Babylonian stuff. <clears throat> and then it morphed into a god, you know, kind of, I don't know if it really morphed, it kind, they traded it out to another god named Nabu. Okay, so Nidoba pretty much means self-sufficient. So a woman who could stand on her own two feet and be self-sufficient. And then later on, for some reason, it changed to this god named Nabu, which is the god of justice and wisdom, apparently. I don't know. Could be how society evolved. And then as it transformed into Greek and Roman mythology, it became Virgo. Now the story of Virgo, <clears throat> it's kind of a conflict between two people, actually three. A type of a love triangle but it wasn't three lovers. It was two starry-eyed lovers, and then one of them, her mother. So you got this young girl, this chick named Persephone, okay? And when she's with her mom, Demeter, 
who's the goddess of the harvest, everything's in bloom. Everything's growing. Life is good. And Persephone loves her job and helps, loves to help out her mom. Everything's great. Then the god of the underworld, Hades, he's peeking out from his realm and he's seeing this young girl, seeing what she does. He likes what he sees. In the story, they say he abducted her. I don't know. I think it was more like coaxed and convinced for her to go down with him. Their version in that mythology of the underworld is not like <clears throat> what you would see in hell. It is more like a place where people hang out after they die. No big deal. You kind of continue, but in a different realm. And this guy, he's in charge. So he coaxes this beautiful young woman down. And yeah, she's young. And she is enraptured and she is besotted. And everything's cool, except for the mom. Oh my goodness. The mom is so ragingly pissed off. What does she do? She kind of takes it to court. The Titans look at her like she's crazy. And they're like, why can't you just deal with this? You know, people partner up all the time. And things happen. And she's like, oh no, oh no, you get her out of there. I want her here. As this is all going down, all the crops, everything that the two ladies worked on start to go cold and die. You know, it affects everything in that area. It affects the animals, it affects the people. So the Titans, they look around them and they're like, okay, we got to deal with this. They take a pomegranate. The fruit of the pomegranate has seeds, okay? They're really red and drippy, kind of like blood. And you'll see in certain coat of arms, like, say, Catherine of Aragon, Catalina, remember? You did a report on her in grade school. She was King Henry VIII's first wife. But her coat of arms was a pomegranate. For generations, that was a symbol in the mating game of those feudal classes for a woman who's betrothed to, you know, a, a guy who owned a kingdom, that she could produce many heirs and many children. It's all about property. And I think that's part of the story here with the Titans. They take what used to be Catherine of Aragon's, you know, little totem, the pomegranate. They cut it in half. They separate 12 seeds out. And they take six of the seeds. And, and they put this into kind of a law. They tell the mom, they're like, okay, six months out of the year, she comes up to the surface and helps you out. That's fine. But the other six months out of the year, she goes down and spends time with her betrothed. Period. Still pissed off the mom, but there was nothing she could do about it. And so Virgo, to me, is about the seasons and how we adjust to them and deal with them how the seasons change, you know? Hades wasn't a bad guy, not at all. He loved her, and why not, you know? Probably gets a little bit boring down in the underworld, so why not take on a partner? So that's the story of Virgo. I think it's a beautiful thing, you know? My first childhood friend actually 
besides Maddie, was a young boy. And he was related to me. He was actually a third cousin of mine. It's ironic because his grandfather was friends with my dad. They're the same age. Get that, okay? His grandfather was friends with my dad. But since they were four years old, I'm not going to give his first name, but I'll give his middle name because he comes from that branch of the Quebecois, the French mixed with the Native American up in Canada, Monet. Beautiful guy. I haven't seen him, my goodness, for years and years and years. But it's okay. I'll tell you about how we first met. My mom was best friends with the kindergarten teacher in town. And I got to visit the kindergarten actually the year before I attended it when I was four years old. So I got to know this woman, wonderful lady. And then I got to tag along when my mom and her would rendezvous together, you know, while they're working on their curriculums because they worked in two different schools in two different towns next to each other. But once in a while, they'd get together for like a lunch break, something like that, go out for pie and coffee, things like that. So I was comfortable on my first day of kindergarten. I was really excited. And huge, huge gymnasium. I thought it was giant. But my mom immediately leads me to this little boy who was playing with a big red ball. And the first thing I noticed about him was he had the thickest glasses in the world. And it made his eyes look big. Really, really dark skin, black hair, and really, really hyper. She brings me up to him and she goes, I want you to meet one of your cousins. This is Monet. And he bounced the ball to me and I caught it. And he came up to me and he said, will you be my best friend? And I said, sure. And it was wonderful. We actually formed a group as we were growing up. When I wouldn't hang out with Maddie, I'd hang out with him because his dad, <clears throat> multimillionaire, he was actually a stockbroker during the 80s. They had the biggest house in the town. And his mom, even though she was an outsider, she ran the town antique store, which was right next to that house. Wonderful woman. He had every toy you could imagine. They would spoil him, but the thing was too, is at a young age, and I don't know if it was because of the inbreeding in the families, I don't know. He had cataracts at a young age and that's why he wore those thick glasses. And he actually had cataract surgery the following year in the first grade. And I was there for him. When my dad would be yelling at home and ranting and raving and being over picky and redundant about everything and I wanted to escape Besides going to Sylvia's house and Maddie's house, I would always ride my bike or even walk because it wasn't very far away at all. It was on the other side of the rodeo. I'd always go to Monet's house. And there were other kids too. And one of them was actually more like a girl. So, but girls and boys could join. And we formed a little club called the War Club. We would reenact <laughs> in the middle of the rodeo stadium. We would sneak in. It was so fun. And then the grounds where they would have the carnival. When the carnival wasn't around during the rodeo, it would be empty. It was a perfect playground. But we formed our little club. We would reenact scenes out of Star Wars or The Lord of the Rings or Conan the Barbarian. All kinds of stuff. 
and we would make up like little plays and even horror stories scare each other and he was so creative and he was very hyper on top of that he was really really smart he just couldn't see very well in grade school in the parochial school he was actually more advanced when it came to math and science than the other kids and the nuns or if we would have a teacher for one grade they would have me sit next to him because I was allowed to write down things sometimes with a big black marker so he could see him better and they always felt that I kept him calm you know the nuns had a hard time with him but I don't know why because he was just really really smart he would get restless though sometimes I had a conversation with my dad when I was a little girl because I knew my sexual orientation. I didn't know how to explain it, but with all the teachings in church and school and whatnot, I felt like I was a sin. And with all the propaganda that I was learning, I felt that in order to not burn in hell, I should become a nun. It's very ridiculous, I know. And then part of me, because I dislike the nuns, I'd be getting in trouble with them a lot too, because I was just a dirty little freaky tomboy. I wanted to prove them wrong and prove that I could be better than them at the job. My dad thought I was crazy. I don't know why, because his aunt, my great aunt, was a wonderful person and she became a nun, great artist. She actually ended up becoming a mother, mother superior for a private girls school back in the 1940s up here in Seattle for a while. And then in her retirement home, which had mostly nuns somewhere in Portland, whenever it was her birthday, the relatives would get together for like a posh party. It was her birthday party, but it turned out to be more like a family reunion. Monet would be there along with some of the other kids. I liked it when Monet was there because I wouldn't feel singled out and I would feel more comfortable being myself. But going back to your grandpa John, he wanted me to marry this boy and I'm thinking in my head as a little girl, you've got to be joking. And he's like, well, he comes from good money, you know, his dad's a stockbroker. And then his grandfather is one of the top farmers in the town. And I was like, oh no, no, I don't think so. He's like, well, you two would have beautiful children. And he goes, on top of that, I've been talking to his granddad and his dad. We joke around it, about it sometimes at the tavern. <sighs> Your grandfather was crazy. But like I told you before, they had their own little rules, their own little ideas, and their own ways of going about things. Monet and I stayed friends for a short while until I moved over to Burnside. He eventually moved up north to the neighboring town, Newgate. It's eight miles north, Burnside is eight miles south. His dad was very wealthy, you know. Mom, his mom's a great person. They always welcome me around. But during the crash of 1987, <laughs> they had just built a house on a hill. <sighs> Tennis court, jacuzzi, all those fancy things. I had never visited it. 
their old house, which was very grand, right by the rodeo stadium. His grandfather, his mom's dad, who ran the town garbage company, he made a lot of good money too. Wonderful man. He ran that house. It was the only house in town that had a swimming pool. But this bigger one on the hill, oh my goodness, I never visited it, but I was told that you had to pack a lunch just to take a tour of the whole place. When the crash happened, his dad lost almost all his money. Boom, just like that. They kept it because they wheeled and dealed with other relatives and got some loans together. And then they had to file bankruptcy. But that just goes to show money ain't everything, you know? And even as I was married, Babushka, to your dad, I remember talking <laughs> to my brother, your Uncle Eddie, one time over the phone. And he would always have to bring up Monet. Always. Like I had made some kind of mistake in not bonding more with this relative and marrying him. And that was getting close to the time where I had to disown your uncle. It wasn't quite there yet, but it was really, really close. But I told Eddie, I'm like, are you joking? How many times do we have to breed with cousins, you know, with all the, the birth defects? and all of that. And why the hell should I have to be with anybody like that? You know, I like the person, but money ain't everything. And that's not the life I wanted to live. Anyways, I just thought I'd tell you that craziness because later on when I get my graphics going down the road, it may take a while, but I take my time with my art because in the future I want to put out quality but I'll put down a lot of our little adventures that we had they were amazing <laughs> and you're gonna love it too but yeah Virgos are wonderful people you know you got Sir Isaac Newton you got Queen Elizabeth the first every sign is important and special in its own way you know and I'm a Capricorn and people dog Capricorns all the time too I don't get it you know I've even been called a devil a couple of times well babushka you've seen my temper especially back in the past when I had that PTSD real real bad you know and really beclemmed. You saw that poison in me. I had to cough it all out. I'm not a devil. No. I see myself more as the horn of plenty. And that's okay. I think it's how people interpret things with their experience in their life too. That makes a difference about the signs. Anyways, so I'm gonna wrap up this video and to all the Virgos out there, the season for you is almost done. And to Tim out there, hello too. And Babushka and Tombo, I love you. Please ring the bell. I'll talk to you later.